What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream. It's your boy Juan Geronimo, and welcome back to Passive Income with ATM's Facebook group, guys. I hope you guys have had an amazing weekend. I definitely had didn't have the best weekend. I had a tough weekend, man. I was pretty sick the whole weekend. Uh, my daughter was actually sick the first half of the week, and then I ended up the I ended the week off sick. So it was a pretty uh, rough week that we ended off on, but. Still got some work done. Still were able to, you know, push through, come up top. And here we are now, of course, in our weekly live trainings, guys, helping you guys learn how to generate passive income with the ATM business. So in the meantime, for everyone that is in the live training right now, go ahead and comment live if you guys are watching live. And also, if you guys are watching the replay, go ahead and comment replay as well. At the end of the day, guys, I'm always watching the comments. So it does not matter if you're watching a replay, whether you had to leave earlier or come in, um, come in later on. I'm always reading the comments. So I appreciate everybody that interacts with my lives. In the meantime, for everyone watching, go ahead and comment also what city and state you guys are watching from. Reason why I ask you guys to comment all the time is just it helps out with the algorithm, guys. So whenever you guys comment, I appreciate when you guys do because it helps out with the algorithm. It helps, you know, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube push us to the top and allow more people to tune into the live. So thank you guys so much for everyone that comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Shout out to Austin, Texas. I got the, you know, the T on the hat today. I'm from Texas as well. Where, where are my people at? My brother Max is in the chat. How you doing, brother? In my TikTok, Memphis, Tennessee, Dallas, Texas. We got we got a, a good amount of Texas in here, LA. All right, guys. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple more seconds. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and shout some of you guys out that are commenting in the comments right now. While we just give it a little bit more time for more people to tune in, um, El Paso, Texas. Shout out to you. Keep commenting, guys. I appreciate when you guys do. And we're gonna go ahead and jump into our live stream in just a couple seconds. Like I said, just gonna give it probably like. 30 more seconds for, you know, the live to start to kick in and more people to start to tune in. So bear with me, guys. Bear with me. <clears throat> you guys are definitely in for a treat today, guys. We're going to go over the ATM business, of course, and how I was actually able to scale my business and successfully establish over 20 ATMs on location in just a matter of three years. To a lot of people, that seems like a lot of ATMs in just a short amount of time, but Believe it or not, guys, I know people that have been in the business either less time than I have been in it or about the same time that have done a lot more and have accomplished a lot more. So um, a 20, 20 ATMs in a matter of three years to me, um, it, it it's pretty, pretty good. Um, I like to call it average because, like I said, there's guys that, you know, surpass 20 locations in three years and then there's guys that don't surpass it just because at the end of the day the great thing about the atm business is that you can scale at your own pace you can fulfill however many atms you want you know depending on your current bankroll depending on your current amount of you know capital you have sitting in your life savings or your savings or you know just your investment account whatever it is that you're using to invest right shout out to all my people in los angeles hamilton city texas a lot of texas uh, people in here shout out to all of you guys i'm currently in texas myself but let's go ahead and jump into the live stream guys i don't want to go ahead and take up too much of your guys time so welcome again guys to our live stream my name is juan geronimo i am currently 25 years old based out of texas and i currently have an atm business here in texas currently own over 20 atms in the area generating me passive income literally guys making me money as i sit here and walk you guys through the business model and how you guys can leverage this business model to make you passive income. So for those of you guys that are interested in the live training, thank you guys so much. Now for everyone in my Facebook chat, is my logo behind me good? Is it is it is it the right way? Because I know sometimes I get it swapped, swapped around and it's all it looks it looks a little dumb. So in my Facebook comments, if anyone's watching in my group, I know I got a, I got some viewers. If the logo behind me looks good, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or let me know that it's okay. Also, if you guys can hear me perfectly fine, let me know as well. Let me know that the audio is good. I don't want to go ahead and start the live training without you guys being able to hear me or see me good. So if you guys can um, hear me, see me, make sure everything's good. Give me a thumbs up. All right. I see some thumbs up. Thank you guys. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now, real quick, guys, before I jump into the live stream, I always like to give a little bit of a background story on myself. I like to give you guys a little bit of, of some information on how I got started and ultimately what qualifies me to give you guys information on the ATM business, right? What qualifies me to teach you how to start the ATM business or give you the fundamentals on the ATM business, right? So like I've told you guys, I'm 25 years old. I've been in the business for a little over three years now, and I currently have over 20 ATMs in Texas generating me passive income. Now, whenever I started my business back in January of 2020, uh, I was in a little bit of a little bit of a pickle, right? Because during January of 2020, that's when the pandemic started to come around. That's when the whole virus started to come around. So I had to be careful, right? And I had two options, right? I, I either wait for it to be over or I start now and get a head start, right? Because whenever the, you know, COVID started to come around, a lot of people were afraid of starting a business. A lot of people were actually putting pause on their business or closing business, right? Because it did affect a lot of businesses. And at the time, I was just tired of the nine to five. I wanted to get started with something, right? I wanted to do something with my life. I wanted to do something with my money. And I'm a little bit of an impatient type of person. So what I went ahead and did was I was like, you know, screw it. Let me go ahead and get started. I started looking into the ATM business um, and found out that this was, you know, the business model for me, right? I like money. As you guys can see here on my TikTok, you guys can see that I do like money. I, I like to work with money. I'm very, I'm very great with money. Even growing up, you know, I was always a serial entrepreneur in school, um, after school, you know, even at, at work, I was always a serial entrepreneur trying to trying to hustle, right? Trying to make a little extra, you know, income. So, you know, January 2020 came along and I was already working at a nine to five, probably since I was 17 years old. And that was because as some of you guys may or may not know, I wanted to get my dream car, which was a Chevrolet Camaro 2015 SS. And that was my dream car. And I managed to take that car out because I was always a hustler. I was always working for what I wanted. And at the end of the day, that's the mindset that I always had, right? So in January 2020, I was impatient. I was like, man, I got to get started somehow. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Purchase my first ATM and we'll see how it goes, right? Um, that, that's exactly what I did. I purchased my first ATM. One thing that I recommend everyone watching right now, if you want to go ahead and get started with your business, don't focus on the fancy things, right? Don't focus on trying to be professional. Don't focus on trying to have the best of the best. And hear, hear me out when I say this, right? Hear me out when I say this, because a lot of people may take this the wrong way. When I say don't try to be as professional, I'm not saying like don't walk into a business like with a nice shirt and a nice, some nice pair of shorts, right? I'm saying like don't try to be, you know, the guy with the best brochures, with the best flyers, the best ads, the best uh, Facebook post, the best looking tuxedo. That's what I mean, right? Don't try to be the best of the best when it comes to looks, right? Uh, whenever I started my ATM business, guys, before I established my LLC, guess what I was doing? I was literally on Facebook Marketplace already posting on uh, and running ads. Free ATM installation for your business. Free ATM installation for bars, gentlemen's clubs, uh, nail salons, barbershops. I was already posting on social media and I wasn't even an established ATM business yet. But I was thinking ahead of the game because what a lot of ATM business owners do is they start and which is OK, right? Start in order. But sometimes you can get away with, you know, knocking out step number five. And by the time you're done doing one, two, three, four and you get to five, that five, step five is already done. Right. So that's what I did whenever I started my business. And this is why I 100 percent recommend you guys to do the exact same thing. Whenever I started my business back in January of 2020, even though I wasn't a established LLC yet, I already had posts on Facebook, you know, marketing myself, free ATMs, you know, for your business. And I was already generating leads. So I was already a couple steps ahead of either people in my uh, current situation, in my current spot, or my peers, right? I was already ahead of the game. So that's one thing that I recommend you guys is don't don't worry too much of on having the fanciest business cards, the fanciest brochures, ordering ordering the fanciest, you know, brochures, paying someone to create you the best of the best. <coughs> Be <coughs> Excuse me. I just ended off of, uh pretty sick this weekend, so I may cough and, you know, sneeze here and there. But um 
as I was saying, don't focus on the best of the best because at the end of the day, guys, you're spending so much time and energy <coughs> on creating a brochure, creating a business card to perfection that you're not actually focusing on your craft. You're not actually focusing on your service, how you can provide value, right? So one thing that I recommend is doing your due diligence on your business and perfecting your offer. That's one thing that I practiced whenever I started my business and what I believe helped me scale my ATM business to what it was in the first year, which was about five to six ATMs, which in my opinion is pretty good for the average beginner, the aspiring entrepreneur with, you know, less than $50,000 sitting in an account, right? So one thing that I recommend, think ahead. Think ahead and, and work ahead, right? And also don't focus on the fanciest things because at the end of the day, that's only going to slow you down. So that's how I was able to start my business pretty quick. And that's number that's like tip number one for this live is uh, being able to uh, start before you actually establish your business so you can test the waters, right? So after that, guys, um, I started posting on Facebook Marketplace and I established my ATM business officially in January of 2020. Literally, guys, I kid you not, by February, I already had a bunch of leads on my Facebook Messenger reaching out to me. Hey, I'm interested. Hey, what, what is this about? Hey, uh, what service do you provide? How much do you charge? I already had leads, right? And I just barely established my business. I haven't even set up my account, my bank account. I haven't set up a relationship with a processor. I didn't even have an ATM at the house yet, but I already had leads. So... Once I started to generate those leads, I started to talk to them because I already done my due diligence. I already took a course. I already, you know, watched a couple YouTube videos. So I already kind of knew what to say whenever I was talking to these businesses. So once I jumped in these messages, <coughs> excuse me, with these businesses, I started to let them know, hey, here's what we offer. Here is the value we can provide. We can lower your credit card fees. If you're if you're taking credit cards, I know you're getting uh, hit with these fees at the end of the month. Uh, we can uh, we can help you minimize those. We can help improve foot traffic, meaning we can put the ATM on Google Maps, on Apple Maps, and every time a customer looks up the ATM in their area, your store is going to pop up. We are going to be able to increase more cash transactions, which at the end of the day, guys, every business owner would would much rather have a cash transaction and here's the reason why number one credit card fees they avoid those 100 percent of the time number two credit whenever you get a cash transaction guys guess what business owners can pretty much write off whatever they want although you know that's not what they're supposed to do you know i'm not gonna sit here and lie and say that business owners don't do that right so whenever you have cash transactions to a lot of businesses that is a lot better to them, right? So if your ATM goes inside of their business and customers are withdrawing 20, 60, 40 bucks out of your ATM and paying for their current transaction in cash, that is a lot better for them than if they were to charge them with a credit card. Because at the end of the day, they are going to pay three to 4% of that credit card transaction out of the business owner's pocket. So this is different, different, you know, little valuable information that you can tell the businesses whenever you're talking to them or business owners or managers, right? So that is exactly what I was doing whenever I was on Messenger talking to all the businesses like, hey, here's what, here's the value I can provide you. Here's everything that my ATM business will provide your business. What do you think about that? Oh, well, that's great. I actually enjoy that. I would prefer that. I want to go cash only, you know, so on and so forth, right? And that helped me generate leads when it came to my ATM business. So by the time I established my OLC, by the time I set up my business bank account, by the time I set up a relationship with the bank, guess what? I already had leads in line waiting for an ATM. So all I had to do, guys, was literally get my money, purchase an ATM, receive the ATM, program it, and take it to the location literally within the next couple of days, guys. And that's how I was able to scale my ATM business in just a matter of literally one month. I started my LLC in January of 2020, and I had my first ATM on location like mid-February. So literally like a month and a half, a month, I already have an, had an ATM on location generating me passive income, right? That ATM, that first ATM that I installed, guys, it generated me in the first month like about 
$150 to $200 uh, in the first month. Now, at the time, to me, $100, $150, $200, guys, if I did not have to work for that money and I saw that money coming into my account every day and at the end of the month it was $100 extra, $150 extra, $200 extra, guess what? That's my phone bill, right? Just imagine at scale, right, with two, three, four, five ATMs. That's exactly what I was thinking whenever I started seeing that, you know, that passive income from my first ATM. And one thing I also recommend a lot of beginners that do get discouraged whenever they install their first ATM is don't get discouraged because a lot of ATMs, they actually start off very slow and that's normal, right? You have to let the ATM go into the business and nurture, right? You have to let it sit there. You have to let the clients get used to the ATM, get used to the business, in a sense, transitioning cash only or at least majority cash, right? And then that's when your ATM transactions are going to increase. One another, Other things that you can implement are marketing strategies like cash only stickers in the front doors and the registers, uh, tip jars, you know, things of that nature that can implement um, more uh, cash cash needs for that business, right? So those are different things that you guys can use for your ATM business to pick up, right? So my first ATM, like I said, it was generating me like 150 to 200 bucks the first month. And then that ATM ended off making me like 300 bucks a month. And that was because, like I said, guys, you just have to let the ATM nurture. You have to let it sit there for a minute. You have to let the clients start to realize that there's an ATM. And sooner or later, transactions are going to pick up. So that's how I was able to start my first business. Now, like I said, guys, $300, it wasn't that much, right? It wasn't that much in a month, right? But then again, that's my phone bill, right? That's my insurance. That's, you know, whatever type of uh, bills, liabilities you have to cover, that is covering that, right? Now, the way I was looking at it is this ATM, if it's making me two to $300 a month, it can easily pay itself off in nine to uh, a year, nine months to a year, a year and a half. And guess what? That ATM after those nine months to a year and a half, it is fully paid off. And guess what? In the ATM business, you have contracts. And in those contracts, typically you have them for about three to five years on average, right? So just imagine your ATM pays itself off in the first nine months. Guess what? For the remainder of the contract, it is just profit. Now you can roll that profit over to another ATM or another investment, right? At the end of the day, guys, the ATM business is just another vehicle to financial freedom or in this case to build you another stream of income, right? Um, that's exactly how I looked at it, right? So one thing you guys can do is use this money and then reinvest it into yourself, reinvest it into the business or into another business. So that's how pretty much I was able to scale my business It's just staying active, always thinking ahead of the game and um, staying consistent and disciplined. That is one of the most important things when it comes to business in general. I know as cliche as this sounds, guys, every business owner probably says this, but you guys have to stay disciplined. You guys have to stay consistent. And most important, guys, you guys have to be uh, patient, right? Patient is key, especially in the ATM business. Whenever you're in the ATM business, guys, you have to be patient. I have students all day, every day, um, not just students, uh, you know, everyone that reaches out to me on social media that tell me, hey, I'm in the business. I started a month ago, two months ago. So far, my ATM's not doing great. And I'm like, hey, dude, I got ATMs right now making me probably about $100, $150 a month, and I got over 20 of them. Um, and some of them are making me about 100, 150. I just installed them last month or two months ago. You just have to give it some time. I'm like, give it 30 days, give it 60 days, 90 days, and see if the transactions are going up. See if you're noticing a difference. And also implement different marketing strategies, different techniques that you can implement to the business to help pick up those cash transactions. And then you're going to start to notice that those transactions are going to go up, which means your profit's going to go up and means that the ATM will eventually become a profitable location, right? So these are the type of messages that I get all the time of people that aren't patient, right? A lot of people think that they're going to come into this business and they're going to automatically see $1,000 a month. That's not how the ATM business works, guys. 
I literally did not start making over a thousand dollars a month until like eight months or nine months in the business. I landed a gold mine actually in my first year in the business, and I that that location was generating me like over five hundred dollars a month, and that location right there was the one that helped me generate over a thousand dollars a month in my first year. I actually ended my first year with like uh, two to four thousand dollars a month in passive income. That was because of my gold mine and the other locations that I currently had in my portfolio. So you have to be patient. Number one discipline you also have to be disciplined guys if you uh let's say work a nine to five or you work a part-time job and you're you know going to your part-time job or your full-time job and you have the weekends off or tuesdays off or mondays off whatever day you have off if you have a goal to set you know one to two hours of prospecting locations on the on your day off keep that same goal and always maintain that goal because at the end of the day guys Um, And this is another thing that a lot of beginners struggle with is staying disciplined because you get one location and you get comfortable or you get two locations and you get comfortable. You step back, you let your ATM sit on location and then you just relax, right? You think the job's done. No, guys, this is exactly what helped me scale. I'm literally walking you guys through what helped me scale my business as quick, as quickly as it did for the short amount of time that I've been in the business, right? I continued to look for locations, even though I was landing locations every other month, right? So just because I landed a location uh, for in January didn't mean that I was going to take February off, guys. I landed a location one day. Guess what? The next day I was prospecting locations again. The next day I was cold calling. The next day I was running ads or I was posting on Facebook Marketplace or, you know, studying the market, how, we you know, where, where I had to post, what times I got to post, studying the algorithm, right? It's no days off is pretty much what I'm trying to say. You guys have to learn how to pick up that skill because that is going to help you scale a lot quicker. If you take a day off, guess what? You're setting yourself back and you're only slowing down. So always stay disciplined. And then again, guys, consistency as well. You got to keep doing it, right? Like I said, if you landed a location January, don't stop February. Continue to move because you're only going to scale faster if you keep moving forward and that's how i was able to pretty much scale my atm business in the matter of three years like i said guys i i've landed over 20 atms on location currently generating me passive income and it was all just me staying disciplined staying consistent and targeting the right businesses right you always want to target the right businesses as well you don't want to just go and place your atm in a random location just because they reached out to you and they're interested in your business you want to be able to place an atm on location where it's going to make sense for you right at the end of the day you're a business owner and at the end of the day when you work with business owners that business owner that you're working with is going to understand where you're coming from if you end up not making any money. So at the end of the day, guys, you want to make sure that you target great locations and great locations for beginner entrepreneurs or beginner ATM entrepreneurs are barbershops, nail salons, corner stores, convenience stores, uh, uh, restaurants. Uh, Believe it or not, guys, there's a couple of pawn shops that you guys can target. There's some pawn uh, pawn, uh, pawn shops that have cash only uh requirement transactions uh, i remember walking into one of these uh pawn shops in my local area and i asked them hey what, what's the purpose of the atm and this was a while back while uh i in the process that i was starting my business uh because i would walk around and prospect locations on foot as well and i'd be like hey what's the purpose of your atm don't you guys take heart they're like yeah but whenever customers pawn things they have to pay with cash or vice versa, you know, whatever his explanation was. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. So pawn shops are other great locations that you guys can target. Gentlemen's clubs, bars, those are the type of locations that you guys want to target. Locations that are cash driven, cash only, and most importantly, cash, uh, not ca- uh, cash, obviously I said cash only, but high traffic, guys. These are the type of locations that you guys want to target for your business and, uh, of course, are going to help you scale your business. So, so far, guys, if you guys are enjoying the content, if you guys are enjoying the live stream, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and comment ATM right now in the comments. Go ahead and comment ATM if you guys are enjoying the live stream, guys. I really do appreciate when you guys comment. Shout out to Lydia in the comments. Shout out to Brandon, my brother Bernard. 
Jonathan in the chat. Shout out to all of you guys. Shout out to my TikTok. You guys are popping off as well. I'll start reading some comments for everyone that has questions, for everyone that has um, that, that is ready for a Q&A. Give me just a second. We are about to move into the Q&A in just a second. But for everyone that's so far enjoying the content, enjoying the live stream, go ahead and comment real quick, ATM. Let me know that you guys are enjoying the ATM live training. Thank you guys so much. And let's go ahead and move into number two in 30 seconds, guys. Give me 30 seconds and I'll be back and, and talk about topic number two. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Give me one second, guys, and we'll go ahead and move into topic number two. One second, and we'll go ahead and get into that in just a second. But I see everyone that's commenting, guys. Thank you guys so much for everyone that's commenting. I see those ATMs. I see uh, everyone commenting. I got to toggle back and forth because I only got one screen today. As you guys can see, I got a different setup. I don't got my regular uh, background in the in the background right now currently working on some remodeling on the office so that's the reason why i can't you know toggle from screen to screen but let's go ahead and go over topic number two for those of you guys that are excited for that q a and you guys have your questions ready to go go ahead and comment q a as well let me know that you guys are are getting your questions ready go ahead and comment q a for everyone that has those questions ready but let's go ahead and move into topic number two guys which is mistakes to avoid when starting the ATM business, right? Ultimately, as a beginner, you know, there's trial and error. There's different things that you guys are going to have to learn with experience, right? <clears throat> now, as a beginner, when it comes to the ATM business, it is very important to, and not just the ATM business, but any business in general, it's very important to invest in yourself, right? It's very important to invest in a mentor, invest into courses, right? That is the whole purpose of college. That is the whole purpose of um, internships, right? You have to learn a certain skill before you actually jump into it, right? You have to train before you go into war, right? So that is, excuse me, one of the most important things in, to, in, in entrepreneurship, right, is being able to believe in yourself and invest in yourself, right? Um, reason why I say this is because as beginners, there's a lot of us, and, and I say a lot of us because I actually was one of those, uh, you know, guys that, that was, you know, had an ego, and ultimately, it didn't let me invest into myself, right? It didn't let me to to throw some money into a course or a program because I was, I was the type of guy that was not only a cheapskate when it came to money, but I was also the type of person that was like, man, I can go on YouTube. I can learn this for free on YouTube. Why should I pay a course, right? I was one of those type of guys, right? But then, like I said, as a beginner, when you start on your own and you don't invest in yourself, you don't invest into some education, self-education, you run into trial and error, right? You run into trial and error and ultimately you learn from experience, right? And there's nothing wrong with learning from experience, right? But a, a smart man learns from an experience, but a wise man learns from someone else's experience, right? So if you're someone that wants to save time, if you're someone that wants to save money, 100% recommend you guys investing in yourselves, investing into a course, investing into some type of program that's going to help you start your business. It doesn't matter whether it's the ATM business, vending machine business, real estate, whatever it is that you guys want to start. But highly recommend you guys to take that extra step and invest in yourself. Because like I said, guys, whenever you start on your own, it is good to go out and get all the information on your own and learn on your own and gather all the experience on your own. But at the end of the day, guys, you start a lot slower. You also lose time and can potentially lose money. And that is exactly what I went through. 
whenever I started the business. I try to go on YouTube. I try to follow all kinds of ATM entrepreneurs and just piggyback off of the information that they were putting out. And at the end of the day, guys, I got tired of putting the puzzle together, right? It took me longer to understand the business model. It took me longer to understand the ATM itself, right? Programming it, filling it up with cash, changing receipt paper, maintaining it. It took me a lot longer to understand the simple things that I could have knocked out, like literally out of the way and would allow me to start a lot sooner, right? So one thing that I recommend investing yourselves because it's definitely going to help you save time. It is going to definitely help you save money. Believe it or not, I firsthand experience, guys, lost a lot of money because I did not want to invest in myself. So that would be mistake number one for just any beginning entrepreneur. But most importantly, of course, ATM entrepreneurs that want to go ahead and get started with this business. Number two, guys, whenever you start the ATM business, don't try to start the ATM business without an, a, a, an entity, a legitimate company, right? An LLC, a limited liability company. The reason why I say this is because number one, first and foremost, you can't even start this business without an LLC. So if you don't have an LLC or plan on getting an LLC, I would highly recommend you to not even try to start the ATM business because you won't be able to start this business without an LLC, which is a limited liability company. Now, the purpose of a limited liability company is, one, to protect you and your personal assets in case of a lawsuit. And then number two, banks won't actually work with you unless you're a legitimate ATM business. And how do you show that you're a legitimate ATM business? Well, through a, a LLC, a limited liability company. So that's mistake number two that you guys should make sure you avoid when jumping into this business. You have to have an LLC. LLC, S Corp, C Corp, whatever you want, but it has to be a legitimate company registered with the state in which you reside in, right? Number two, business bank accounts, guys. And in a sense, I'm giving you guys mistakes to avoid and also the step-by-step -step how to start this business, right? So number one, invest in yourself, right? You could always go on your own, but it's going to cost you time and it's going to cost you money. Or you can invest in yourself. It's going to cost you a little bit of money, but you're going to get the shortcut, right? You're going to get help. You're going to get that mentor. You're going to have someone in your corner helping you out every step of the way. Now, number two, LLC, your, your company. You have to form your company, right? You cannot start this business without a company. So that would be step number two, right? Number three would be your business bank account. A lot of people think that you can just go into Bank of America, Chase, or Wells Fargo and open up a regular business account or open up a regular account and, and run your ATM business through that account. That is actually not true. If you go to Bank of America right now, Chase, Wells Fargo, which I highly recommend you not to, but if you go in there right now and you tell them that you want to open up a business bank account for the ATM business, even if you're a legitimate business, right off the jump, they're not going to work with you. The reason why is because they don't work with the ATM business. The banks that you do want to target are credit unions or smaller banks in your area like Comerica, City Banks, you know, local banks in your state and credit unions, right? Those are the type of banks that you want to target. Now, like I said, guys, the mistake you want to avoid is one, trying to work with the three big banks, which is Bank of America, Chase and Wells Fargo. Reason why I say this is because, like I said, I've already experienced this myself. I was banking with Bank of America for nine months. Once the higher ups found out that I was in the ATM business, they, they sent me a letter and then they told me, hey, we do not work with the ATM business. Unfortunately, we had to shut your account down. They closed my account. They had to hold my funds and then send me cashier texts to my address like 10 or 10 or 14 business days later. So I had to now put a, a pause on my business because I had no cash to fill up my ATMs. So I had to go through all of that. Right. I had to experience all of that um, to get to this point. And of course, now walk you guys through that. Right. So this is why I say you got to you have to invest in yourself because these are problems that you can potentially run into as a beginner that you would prefer and, I, and I, I'm telling you, you would prefer uh, avoid these issues because they're headaches. So bank accounts, don't go with the big three, Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America, and open up a business bank account for the ATM business. It has to be a business bank account. Number three, guys, processing company, or number four, processing company. Processing companies, uh, there's a wide variety of companies that you can work with for your ATM business. And a processing company is just a company that's going to facilitate your transactions, right? If a customer goes up to your ATM and they try to withdraw $20, 
the processing company is going to make sure that that customer not only has $20 in their account, but also has that $3, $4, $5 fee that your ATM is charging. Once the processing company finds out, which literally isn't a snap of a finger, once they figure out that they have enough funds in their account, they're going to tell your ATM, okay, dispense those $20. We got their money out of their account. They're good to go. And all of this literally, guys, in seconds. It happens in seconds. But that is what the processing company does, right? It allows your ATM to dispense cash for customers, and they're the ones that take the cash out of the customer's account and puts it right into your bank account, right? So that is what the company or a processing company does. Now, the red flags that you should look into companies or the mistakes that you should try to avoid if you can is signing contracts. Whenever you work with a processing company, one thing that you always want to avoid is signing contracts. Some of these processing companies may offer you deals that are too good to be true, but their, their, uh, their way of, of getting you to sign that contract or what's hidden you know, behind that contract or in, in the contract is after a certain amount of time, we're charging you processing fees or after a certain amount of ATMs, you got to pay this amount or prices on ATMs are going to go up after a certain amount of purchase. You know, they're going to have all kinds of absurd uh, requirements or regulations or or uh, how can I say it's uh, sections in their contract that of course you as a beginner didn't read or didn't get, right? So always avoid signing contracts when it comes to processing because at the end of the day, there's a bunch of processing companies out there that you can work with without signing a contract. And I can actually help you out with that if you ever decide to start your ATM business. I can actually set you up with my team. We can hook you up with free unlimited processing, meaning we don't tie you up under no contract and we don't charge you fees to facilitate your transactions. So that is my next step, which is transaction fees, right? Whenever you're targeting a company, you want to avoid processing fees, right? Some processing companies will offer you free processing and others may charge you processing. You want to avoid the companies that charge you processing because like I said, guys, I can automatically offer you free processing, right? If you process with us. So that's what you should look for when you're looking for processing. Now, after processing, guys, which I believe was step number four, I think, excuse me, uh, you're ready for ATM purchases, right? Now, when it comes to ATM purchases, you want to purchase an ATM through an ISO, right? An ISO is an independent sales organization. Um, this company is pretty much the company, and sometimes an ISO could be your processor as well. Uh, but this is the company that will help you purchase ATMs, right? At discounted rates, uh, wholesale pricing. You want to be able to get wholesale pricing on ATMs, number one. And number two, you want to always work with a one-stop shop, right? If you're working with an ISO that's helping you out with purchasing ATMs, try to see if they can help you out with processing as well. At the end of the day, it's a lot easier to work with a company that can help you with one with one full system than to go processing here, ATM here, internet here, and then you're all over the place that at scale, it starts to get confusing. It starts to get difficult to work, right? So always work with the ISO, always work with a one-stop shop. And last but not least, guys, location. Location is key. You want to avoid these mistakes when you're going to a location. Number one, guys, whenever you're working with a location, number one, you want to work with locations that make sense, right? If it makes sense, it makes dollars. Like uh, Ben Mallow uh, says, and I don't know if you guys follow him on YouTube, but Ben Mallow is a real estate guy. He's on YouTube, but he says if it makes sense, it makes dollars, right? And pretty much what he means by that or what that means is, if you're putting an ATM inside of a business that has no traffic and also does um, almost little to no uh, cash transactions, then more than likely that ATM is not going to perform well. That's a location that would not make sense. So those are the type of locations that you want to avoid. You want to go to locations that are high traffic, cash only or cash driven, barbershops, nail salons. Those are the type of locations that you want to target. So. That's another mistake that you want to avoid when it comes to locations, guys. And then <clears throat> other mistakes uh, here and there are hiring technicians, right? You could always hire a technician. That is not a mistake, but it is something you can avoid if you invest in yourself, right? I just, I installed an ATM for a client probably like four or five weeks ago, and I charged them like uh, 400 bucks for a 30-minute process to install and program an ATM, right? Now, 
you can avoid that by investing into a mentorship program that will teach you that. Because if you paid that for one ATM, just imagine how much money you're going to end up putting out of pocket when you're at scale, right? So I would recommend you to start this business and learn how to fully operate this business all on your own. So you avoid all these hidden fees, all these extra costs that you could potentially save by doing the job on your own. Like I told you guys, it took me literally 30 minutes to do that process. And if it took me 30 minutes, I'm sure it can take you guys 30 to 45 minutes, right? And now you're saving yourself 300 to 400 bucks for that process alone. So that's another mistake that you want to avoid as a beginner when you start the ATM business. So <clears throat> those are the mistakes, the general mistakes that you want to avoid when starting the ATM business. If you guys are enjoying the live, guys, give me some thumbs up. Let me go ahead and get some likes. Let's go ahead and help out with the algorithm, guys. Thank you guys so much for everyone liking, everyone commenting. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the live. Uh, if you guys are excited for Q&A, though, go ahead and start commenting Q&A. Start getting your questions ready because we are about to get ready for our Q&A, guys. Go ahead and give me 30 seconds and we'll move into our Q&A in 30 seconds. Thank you. All right, guys, Q&A time. Now, real quick, guys, before we actually move into our Q&A, and, and the reason why I do this is because I still haven't seen some questions come in yet. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit more time to go ahead and start commenting some of your questions. But before uh, you, I start answering those questions, let me go ahead and move into my mentorship program. I know a lot of you guys always have this question is, do you have a mentorship program? Do you have a course? Can you help me start my ATM business personally, one-on-one? -on -one? Um, and yes, I can, guys. I have a current mentorship program. We're actually called the ATM Plug. As you guys can see in my background, TikTok, you guys can't see that. But if you guys are watching me on my Facebook group or YouTube, you definitely can see that. And with my... Uh, program we're called the ATM plug this is my elite package right here guys and this package right here is pretty much a one-stop shop we help you from A to Z from the ground up and with this package right here guys you pretty much start with us from ground zero to the end right we help you all the way up from uh, uh, opening up your LLC all the way up until installing your ATM on location now number one what you give with my mentorship program is an online step-by-step -step course this online step-by-step -step course is going to guide you from A to Z on how to start your business, how to understand the business, how to operate your business, right? I apply for an LLC on video, so you mimic my steps on how to properly apply for an LLC for the ATM business. I obtain the EIN. I open business bank accounts. I uh, prospect locations. I maintain my machine. I, may, I clean it out. I fill it up with cash, so on and so forth, right? I install it, do all that good stuff, program it. All in the course alone, guys. The course alone is going to teach you everything you need to know. Besides the course, you're also going to get a clients-only group, access to a clients-only group. The clients-only group is going to allow you guys to ultimately be in contact with me, be in contact with my network of connections, and ultimately be part of my community, the people that invested in my mentorship program. Here's where I'm going to teach you guys all about the business, give you guys the in and outs about the business, whether there's any new updates on the industry, any new offers, any discounted rates, any type of discounts. My clients, my students always get firsthand pick when it comes to these new offers, new announcements, right? So the clients only group is beneficial for that. And that's where I'll contact everybody as a whole. And that's the purpose why I provide you guys a group. Now you get lifetime access to the course and the group. Now, besides this, you also get one brand new Hyosung Halo 2. Now, for those of you guys that don't know what a Hyosung Halo 2 is, that is an ATM. It comes with two-year warranty from the manufacturer. And this is the ATM that you guys see me standing next to in all my videos and, and pictures, right? If you guys follow me on social media, 
the the ATM that I currently use, that is a Hyosung Halo 2, and you automatically get that ATM included with my mentorship package. You do get one included, and it is 100% yours. Besides the ATM, you get an internet box, so your ATM can communicate to the network or the processing network. That way, you're making money, right? So we do provide you internet as well. The only thing you do have to cover for the internet is a $6.99 monthly fee, and that's to continue your internet to, to continue working, right? To continue to give a service. Besides the ATM and internet, guys, I automatically provide you with free unlimited processing. Earlier, I told you guys that I provide you free unlimited processing, meaning I hook you up with my network. We process your ATM transactions for free. We don't tie you up under no contract. So if you ever decide to part ways, guess what? You can do that. No repercussions. We don't charge you processing fees. So if you're charging $3, $4, $5 per transaction, you are keeping 100% of that fee. Now, that is our unlimited processing. You also get ATM programming training, which is one thing that I've told you guys is a mistake you can avoid, right? Investing into a program can get you these different insights on the business and, and learning the business, right? Programming your ATM, right? I'm going to actually teach you how to properly program your ATM and work with the software within the machine. That way you know how to program it, you know how to install it, you know how to work it. So you don't have to hire a third-party technician and pay a couple hundred dollars for their service, right? You can do all of that on your own in-house and save you some money. So besides the ATM programming, I'm also going to provide you an ATM placement agreement. Now, the ATM placement agreement is a contract between you and the business owner, the location that you're doing business with. And this location agreement is what's going to keep both of you guys on the same page, literally the same page, the contract agreement is what's going to keep you guys on the same page and is what is what going to protect you and your company, right? In the contract agreement, it's going to say, of course, that you, the ATM business owner, owns that ATM. You're going to maintain it. You're going to make sure it's working, as well as the business owner is going to make sure that the ATM is not vandalized, is not uh, tampered with or anything like that, right? So that is what a contract agreement is in, uh, in place for, right? Now, my contract agreement that I am actually going to provide you in my mentorship program, I actually paid $1,200 for my attorney to create and draft up for me. I am going to provide that for you with my mentorship program. So not only do you avoid going out trying to find an attorney to do one for you or draft one up for you, but also pay a couple hundred bucks for an agreement, right? I already have an agreement in place. All you have to do, use it for your ATM business, put in your business name, your logo, and you're good to go. It's a standard agreement. Anyone can use it nationwide. I currently have 45 students all over the U.S. that use this agreement. So besides my agreement, guys, you're also going to be provided with unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentorship. The unlimited one-on-one -on -one mentorship literally means you're getting mentorship, <clears throat> mentored by me, all my network of connections, Lifetime, right? You're going to have my cell phone number. You guys will be able to reach out to me anytime you need any help. If you ever have any questions, you can reach out to me. If you ever have any concerns, you could reach out to me. If you ever need any help screening a location, you could reach out to me. You get unlimited mentorship with my mentorship program. There's a lot of programs out there that offer you tech support and all that good stuff. We offer you tech support as well. You can reach out to Hyosung anytime. You can reach out to Switch Commerce in hand, whoever it is that you have to reach out to for the ATM business. But the great thing about our program and our mentorship program, my specific program in, in general, is that you can reach out directly to me, directly to my partners, and we'll be able to help you out with anything that you need. Besides our unlimited mentorship, I'm also going to provide you over a dozen PDFs. And these PDFs right here are going to pretty much guide you from literally brochures all the way up to sell scripts. I provide you brochures. I provide you the sell script. So you, if you don't know how to sell, guess what? I provide you a sell script that you, you just read over, you learn it, and then you use that sell script to go out and prospect locations, right? You, I'm, I'm in a sense helping you with sales when it comes to the ATM business. I also provide you qualification questionnaires. Of course, the agreement, um, uh, what, what else? Uh, uh, MSB documentation and over a dozen more PDFs uh, that, that are going to benefit you when starting your business, right? Templates that you're going to pretty much use for your business. They're blank templates that you 
pretty much just slap your logo on there, slap your company name on there, and then you're going to be able to use it so you don't waste the time on creating your own. You don't waste the time or money on getting new ones already created, right, when I already have them set for you, right? Remember what I told you guys in the beginning of the live. You don't want to be the fanciest ATM company out there, right? I learned this the hard way. You don't want to be the one with the best business cards. You don't want to be the one with the best brochures. You want to be the one that delivers the best value, that can deliver that uh, guaranteed ATM working 24-7, right? What purpose does it serve if you uh, waste all your money on brochures and business cards and then you got little to no money left at your ATM has to be a used ATM or an older ATM because you wasted all your money on trying to look good instead of actually providing the value, right? So that's one thing that I always recommend, guys, is um, buying a when you're new, buy new ATMs. The business cards or brochures, buy little, uh, little to you know, I always recommend you know, uh, 50 business cards at the beginning, um, carry them with you as, as you go on your day by day, pass them out if you have to. When you run out, just order more, right? Some business owners, they start off by ordering 200 business cards, like if they're about to start a marathon tomorrow, right? So you always want to start little by little and then work your way up. You don't ever want to start off right away. And this is what my PDFs, in a sense, come into play, right? You don't have to create all of this on your own. You already get all my PDFs, my sales scripts, the brochures, qualification questionnaires, the location agreement. You already get all of this included, so you don't have to go out of your way and create all of that on your own. Because at the end of the day, we're here to save you time. We're here to save you money. <clears throat> and then last but not least, with my elite package, guys, you get unlimited location finder service or one guaranteed location, depending on which package you like to go with, right? Unlimited location finder service simply means that you get access to our unlimited location finder service for a full year, you get to fulfill as many ATMs as you want. And with every ATM that our location finder service finds you, you just pay a small 10% fee of every ATM transaction. That's our unlimited location finder service. Now, the benefit of using our unlimited location finder service is that there is no upfront cost per location that we help find you, right? So we find you 10 locations, you're only paying 10% of the usage of that ATM. So ultimately, if an ATM performs great, that's great for us, right? Our location team. If uh, ATM performs not so great, guess what? That's not great for us. So we have an in invested interest in finding you great locations because that's how our location finder uh, service is going to make money as well. We make money with you, not off of you. That is one of the key uh, components of our program compared to any other program out there. Now, of course, if you go with our guaranteed location, we do need go negotiate the deal for you. We do find you a guaranteed location, guaranteeing you a minimum of $200 a month. But if we don't find you a location that performs that or better than that, then we will continue to find you another one. But the only thing about that is, of course, guaranteed locations, guys, they always come with a high ticket price because at the end of the day, it's a location guaranteed to you. Negotiating is done for you. All of, It's like a done for you service, right? our unlimited service, it's more of a done with you. We are actually going out prospecting locations for you. You jump on the phone, you, uh, on the phone, you negotiate the deal. And if you land it, that's great for everybody, right? We went with you, not off of you, right? So uh, we're a done with you program. And these are, this is pretty much my package. This is what we offer. If you're interested in these packages right here, guys, go ahead and comment plug. That's P L U G. For everyone on my TikTok, if you are interested in my mentorship program, go ahead and message me on Instagram. Plug P-L-U-G for everyone on my TikTok, and I will go ahead and reach out to everyone. For everyone on my Facebook, YouTube, go ahead and comment plug. I'll reach out to you guys and set up a quick 10 to 15 minute informational call, and we'll go ahead and go over the best options for you. We'll see what fits you best, and if we can get you started with your ATM business as soon as possible, hey, we're off to the races. So if you guys are interested in the mentorship program, like I said, go ahead and comment plug. That's P-L-U-G. Go ahead and comment plug. And we'll go ahead and send you a message after this live training, set you up with a quick 10 to 15 minute informational call, and hopefully get you started with your ATM business along our mentorship program. But with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and jump into our Q&A. For everyone that has any questions, go ahead and start dropping your questions down below. We probably have about five to seven minutes, and I'll go ahead and knock these five to seven minutes out just by answering any questions for you guys. So with that being said, guys, 
Um, thank you guys for joining the live and let's go ahead and get some questions in. Let me see. I think I got a question earlier. When you're starting out, is it best to start with a new ATM? So I got a question right here. When you're starting out, is it best to start with a new ATM? Yes. Whenever you're a beginner, you always want to start off with a brand new ATM. The reason why I say this is because, number one, a brand new ATM comes with warranty. A brand new ATM more than likely will not malfunction for the, you know, rem the next year, two years, right? It's going to work um, because it's brand new. And compared to a used ATM, if you buy a used ATM, as a beginner, number one, you won't know what to pinpoint. You won't know what to look for, right? You could potentially have a scammer in there. The ATM could potentially not be EMB compliant or compliant in general. And those are factors that you have to take in as a beginner, right? So you're going to save yourself a lot of time, a lot of headaches, a lot of money if you just purchase new. We, uh, we always say, if you're new, buy new. And that's 100% recommended at all times. Um, I had an LLC and a business account for vending machines. Can I use that one or I need to open up a new one? Now, if you already have a current LLC, you could always use that LLC for your ATM business. But one thing about putting two different businesses under one LLC is let's say, for example, they sue one business. You're technically tying both businesses together and eventually that could um, that could hurt you, right? You are now tying both businesses together and both businesses are technically under that lawsuit, right? So that is one down thing about you, downside about using the same LLC, but you could always use your current LLC. Now the bank account, I don't know if you will be able to use the same bank account. You may have to open up another bank account with a bank that works with the ATM business. All right, let me see. Let me see. Let me go ahead and look at some more questions. How much cash? Uh, to get started with your ATM business, you need about six to nine thousand dollars to get started with your first ATM. Yes, yeah, so six to nine thousand dollars to get started with your first ATM. When it comes to paying locations, or in this case, rent, um, the way I handle my rent is I always pay the business a percentage per transaction. So if my ATM is doing 100 transactions a month, I'm paying them 25, 50 cents per transaction. If my ATM is doing 150 plus, I'm paying them 75 cents. If it's doing like 500 plus, then I'm paying them like a dollar, right? So at the end of the day, that's how I go about whenever it comes to paying my locations. That in this case would be my rent whenever I pay my locations. <clears throat> Correct. You can you can potentially uh, spend more on an old ATM than if you just purchase a new one, because like, you know, you can you could potentially run into um, like malfunction parts like a, a dispenser malfunction or or a dispenser go, goes out, a keypad goes out, a credit card reader goes out. And now you got to replace that. And a credit card reader alone is probably like 300 bucks. Right. If you buy a used ATM for two thousand 2100 or a little less than that and you have to replace a keypad that's already 300 plus tax on top of that and a brand new atm with the internet box already included is 2700 bucks without an internet box is probably like 2600 2500 something right so at the end of the day you're probably better off just buying a brand new atm it's going to save you time it's going to save you money and overall a headache what are they still the atm well, one thing I would recommend you guys to do, guys, is, is do your due diligence when it comes to installing your ATMs. Every single one of my students, I walk them through how to properly install your ATM and different techniques that you can implement into your business to, to further prevent that, right? To prevent that person with the wrong intentions that walks into that business to see that your ATM would be almost hard or impossible to get to. Right. So you always want, like I said, you always want to think ahead of the, uh, ahead of the game. You want to be ahead of the game. Right. So you always want to think ahead and install your ATM accordingly. Right. You don't want to install your ATM next to a window. Right. Unless you, you don't have no other option and you're willing to take that risk. You don't want to install the ATM across the, the door, the door. Right unless you're willing to take that risk, right? So there's different things that you can avoid 
uh, to to avoid to avoid that, right? I've been in the business for over three years currently, and I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys and say I've never had this happen to me. I did have one ATM uh, broken into <clears throat> as of recently, probably a couple months ago, and um, this ATM right here, the reason why it got broken into was one because I installed it in a really bad area. That was number one, right? But that was a risk that I was willing to take. Right. I'm, I'm already I already got over to uh, a dozen ATMs on location. So I was like, you know, I was prepared for the risk. Right. My, my portfolio is generating me enough to to replace that ATM. Right. So that was already uh, a relief for me. Right. Not everybody is in that same position. Right. So one thing that I would recommend you to do is if you're looking to purchase an ATM and place it in an area that is a high crime area or an area where, um, it is like hidden or in a corner and it could potentially get broken into and it won't, you won't find out because it's not in a busy area or there's not businesses around it or uh, active, you know, traffic around it. Then I would consider installing that location because it could potentially be a bad deal for you. Right. But if you're someone that is willing to take that risk, then, you know, by all means, <clears throat> like I said, one of my locations got broken into, probably a couple months back. And, you know, I prepared myself for, for a situation like that. I am currently still prepared for a situation like that because at the end of the day, guys, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat the ATM business, right? I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat that this business is, you know, all, you know, gold on the, on the other side of the rainbow, right? There's, there are ups and downs in the business, right? Just like any other business, right? Every business has its own risk. The, the, the key to success is preparing yourself for that risk and, um, in a sense, uh, setting yourself up to prevent that risk, right? So, like I said, if you are looking at a potential location and it's, a, it's in a bad area, I would consider that location because, you know, the risk of that ATM getting broken into is a lot it's a lot higher, right? Um, you could have insurance for your ATMs and then the insurance could eventually cover that ATM along with the cash that was inside it. Um, that, that would be another precaution that you can put or implement to your business to cover that loss, right? So there's different things that you can implement to your business to help cover theft or any, any damages. <clears throat> Any more questions? <clears throat> yeah, so insurance covers your ATM if you have your ATM covered under insurance. There's a lot of ATM businesses that don't have insurance on their ATMs or ATM company. And that's just because at scale, guys, it becomes pricey. It becomes pricey. And, I mean, the likelihood of your ATM getting broken into, like I said, I'm not going to, excuse me, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say that it doesn't happen. But nowadays in 2023 is very rare just because an ATM, especially the ones that we own, private ATM business owners own, it's like one to three thousand dollars inside of these ATMs. And one to three thousand dollars is not what one to three thousand dollars was, you know, a decade ago. Right. A decade ago, one to three thousand dollars can last you a month and do you good for a month or more. Nowadays. I mean, you're going to spend more in gas arriving to the location, the tools to use to break into the location and everything else, right? So at the end of the day, it's too much of a high risk now for a low reward. So that's why you don't see a lot of ATMs getting broken into nowadays because it's just not worth the risk anymore, right? But not saying that it doesn't happen. Every now and then it may happen, and that's just because those people that aren't smart enough will go into the location and, broken, and break into the ATM. Now, Everyone watching, I kid you not, the ATM that I got, that my ATM that got broken into a couple months ago that I was just talking to you guys about, funny story, that ATM that got broken into, and I promise you guys, I promise you I'm not lying, I'm not sugarcoating this or nothing, on, in, on everything I'm not lying, this ATM that got broken into that was mine, um, ran out of cash the night before it got broken into, which which worked out perfectly on my part, right? It was a, it, it was a definitely a, a big relief on my part, right? Whenever I found out that it was that ATM that got broken into, because one, the idiots that broke into my ATM 
And all they did was broke the safe open and somehow they figured out how to do it. Now I figured out how to prevent it. Um, so that will probably not happen ever again, at least for my portfolio, because I figured out what caused that safe door to open and what can I do now to prevent it from opening up. But whenever they got that open and they pulled that box out, guess what? That box did not have any cash in it because it ran, it ran out of money. So I kid you not, I'm not lying to you guys. I promise you guys that this ATM literally did not have any money when these guys broke into it. So these idiots, uh, they committed a whole crime. They broke into a building. They broke into my ATM. They did a bunch of damages and they they took off with no money because they, my ATM ran out of money. So that that's a little bit of a funny story. Uh, it's a, definitely a unique one for me. Um, I thank God for that. Uh, that my ATM ran out the night before. And funny story, guys, I was on a meeting the night before my ATM ran out, right? It was probably like 7 or 8 p.m. And Bernard, if you're in here right now, brother, I was on a meeting with you. And I was I was on a meeting. Uh, we were, you know, talking business, going over different strategies that we're implementing. As you guys may know, Bernard in the chat on my Facebook group, he's actually a consultant for my program so for any of you guys that aren't his friend go ahead and add him as a friend go ahead and send him a message but bernard we were talking on the on on we were on a call and my atm i get a notification it was like 8 8 30 or something like that my atm runs out of money this location closes like at nine or ten it's a slower location so i wasn't too afraid of like oh my god i gotta go fill it up right so i i paid no mind to it i was like let me finish this meeting if I finish it early, I'll go fill it up, and that way I don't have to show up in the morning, right? So then I I finish my meeting. I look at the time, and it's like 9.45, right? It's already – so much time had already passed by. I was like, man, it's about to close. There's no point in me taking money, filling it up, and it's probably not even going to dispense any cash for the last 30 minutes. So I'll just go back the next day. Literally, guys, I kid you not. I wake up at nine in the morning to a phone call. The business owner calls me, hey, they just broke into your ATM and stole it. My heart drops. I'm like, shoot, I was barely waking up, so I didn't know what ATM it was. So then I look into the messages and it was the ATM that ran out of money. So I was like, dang, I was literally on the call and it took longer than expected. And somehow I didn't like urge to go fill it up. And maybe it was just a sign to not go fill it up because, I mean, I, I always see things and, and, and look at them that they happen for a reason, right? So somehow I did not go fill up that ATM for a reason. And I guess that reason was that it was going to get broken into the next day, right? So now on the bright side for me, although that ATM was damaged, I use that ATM now for parts. So now I have an ATM for parts. And as an ATM business owner, one thing that I recommend is always having parts for your ATMs because at scale, every now and then you may run into an issue like a dispenser, a card reader, a, 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 a pin pad or something, right? And it's always good to have parts. Whenever I did not have my ATM broken into, I was using a brand new ATM for parts. So I always had a brand new ATM sitting in the office waiting for if I ever had any issues with parts, right? I'll just take it out the new ATM and, and, and use my warranty for the other one, send it out, get the replacement and just replace it, right? But now that I have a broken into ATM and everything else works except for the safe, meaning literally almost 95% of the ATM works except the, AT, the safe door is broken, right? Now that I had that, now I have an ATM for parts and I didn't lose any money because at the end of the day, there was no money inside of the ATM. So I thank God every day for that. And um, I take that as a blessing. I, I, I def That definitely was an eye-opener for me. Uh, that definitely opened up my eyes. And, and, and I learned a little bit from that experience to implement different strategies and consider different locations when starting the business. But like I said, guys, it's like any other business. Every business comes with a risk. Whenever I started my two-row business, I bought a brand new 2022 Tesla Model 3, full uh, full range, um, wide interior, the not the best of the best, but almost the best of the best, right? Something that was that I could afford, right? Something that I could manage. 
And all, it was all because I wanted to put it on Turo and I wanted to drive a Tesla for free because I rent it out on Turo and it pays for itself and I drive it for free, right? And that is exactly what I did. But whenever I started this business, I was like, I can potentially get this this car wrecked, scratched, door dings, uh, windshield cracks, uh, rim scrapes. I can tire uh, flat tires. There's so much that I can, um, in a sense, risk just by buying this car and putting it out on Turo. Is it worth the risk, right? But as an entrepreneur, guys, an uh, entrepreneur always takes risk, right? An entrepreneur always takes risk. He, they always go and, and, and move forward and look at the bigger picture, look at the better picture, right? So that's exactly what I did. I got my Tesla Model, uh, my, my model 3, uh, put it on Turo, and guess what? I was, excuse me, I was driving this Tesla probably for, I want to say like close to, excuse me, this Red Bull's making me burp, um, close to a year. For free i was literally driving this tesla close to a year for free and i did not have to pay a single payment because my car was initially paying for itself right i didn't have to pay for it turo was allowing me to have this this car pay for itself so in this case it was an asset but i knew the risk that came with it i had of course every every other every other client they turned the car in with a little scrape on the rim unfortunately i did not want to make a claim for a small scrape have my car go into the shop for weeks just for a small scrape and now lose money on that car. So I allow it, I, I allowed it to happen over and over. Now my rims, they're not beat up, but they're a, a little beat up, right? And that was just a risk that I was willing to take, right? But I was able to pay that car off for a full year without having to put it out of pocket, right? The car paid for itself. So that's a risk that I was willing to take whenever it came to renting on Turo, right? My car rental business. Another business is uh, real estate, for example. If you guys buy real estate and now you're renting it to tenants, that risk is, of course, is great cash flow. Of course, is great equity in that in that, in that that uh, house. But guess what? It can burn down. They can damage it, flooding, whatever, right? There's always risk to every business. So one thing that I always recommend every business owner, every aspiring entrepreneur is don't focus on the bad things and things, right? Always focus on the good things. Always look uh, on, always look ahead and tunnel vision and, and just strive for success, right? <clears throat> and just test the waters, right? See what works for you. And if it works for you, keep moving, keep going, right? The ATM business worked out for me the first year. I ended the first year making over like $2,000 a month in passive income. My second year, I ended up making over $6,000 in passive income. I'm o I'm currently over three years in the business making five figures a month in passive income just for my ATM business alone. And that's because I stuck with it, right? I knew my risks. I knew the risks that came with the business, but I didn't care, right? I kept moving forward because that's what an entrepreneur does. They keep moving forward and they do not care about the 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 risks that come along with the business, right? Entrepreneurs are risk takers. So that was one risk that I was willing to take. When I started my tour of business, that was one risk that I was willing to take. The the cracked windshields, the door dings, the the scratches on the doors or or, or the scratches on, around the paint. The, the the scrapes on the rims those were risks that I were that I was willing to take because I knew that at the end of the day they were worth it right so that's just um, entrepreneurship right entrepreneurship in general is willing to take risks right so any other questions guys because we definitely were on here a little bit longer than what I anticipated to be and sorry if I get carried away and I just start to ram uh, but I see that you guys don't have any more questions. Let me go ahead and get, give you guys 30 seconds to comment any more questions. But if you guys don't have any more questions, I mean, that's pretty much going to be it for tonight's live training. Thank you guys all for everyone that tuned into the live. I appreciate you guys for commenting, for interacting with me, for liking the live. Thank you guys so much. It means so much when you guys, you know, join, interact with me, comment. It just, you know, shows me that you guys are not only enjoying the content, but of course, are learning, right? And that's what I'm all about, giving you guys all this information for free. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining the live training. Uh, like I said, for everyone on TikTok, join my link in my bio if you want to join my free Facebook group, which is where I'm live right now. 
and uh I got a free guide. I got my website and all my other social medias in the link in my bio. For everyone on my Facebook group watching right now, if you guys have not received the guide, an ATM business strategy guide, go ahead and comment guide. It is a free guide. You do not have to pay for anything, guys, here. Here in this live training, you do not have to pay for nothing. It is all free. It's free live. Um, bunch of value for you guys. That's literally what this is all about. A free value, a free game on the ATM business. So for everyone that has not received an ATM business strategy guide, go ahead and comment guide down below. The G-U-I-D-E, go ahead and comment guide, and we'll go ahead and send that guide over to you as soon as possible. Now for everyone that's on my TikTok and wants that guide, message me on Instagram guide. I see I got a couple people already commenting on TikTok. Go ahead and message me, guide, on my Instagram, guys, please, because uh, that's the only way I'll be able to reply to you guys. If Once I end the live, I can't see your guys' comment. So for everyone on my TikTok, can you guys go over to my Instagram and send me the message guide on my Instagram? I reply to everybody. I literally reply to everybody. So for everyone that wants a free ATM business guide, go ahead and comment guide. Or TikTok, message me, guide, to my Instagram, and I will go ahead and send that guide over to you guys as soon as possible. But with that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for joining the live training. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys so much. And um, it was a pleasure jumping on here and giving you guys a bunch of information on the ATM business. But with that being said, guys, it was your boy Juan Geronimo, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Peace.